Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas Hampson here. It's Thursday, so it must be another visit with an extraordinary colleague or musician or surprise guest, whoever it is. You know, I've been doing these wonderful interviews Tuesday about song and Thursday about musicians and colleagues. Uh, and I must say the Thursday evening has been, it's like its like being able to have a glass of wine and a chat with old friends as our paths cross, and at least they've been, they've been crossing digitally. Um, I want to give a little bit of a preamble. This is obviously Idajo Live. This is the place where classical music happens, and it's been happening in my life in a very significant way since last March on idajo.com, on idajo Live. And I just want to thank you all for taking this journey with me. I want to thank you all for for tuning into Idonjo Live and the various episodes of various colleagues as they talked about music and explored their own lives. I want to thank all my guests since last last March, literally a different person. We had no repeats yet, which is fantastic. Uh, and everybody just embracing this format and having a casual conversation. I know it's a little awkward for me to go on like this without introducing the most extraordinary person sitting in front of you, but you all know Manny Ack, so I can go on for a little bit longer before we get to our conversation. This is the last conversation on Thursday for 2020. Uh, it's been a it's been a great time. I will be back in January, both with Tuesday Beyond Song, be a song and Beyond, the Hamsong Foundation cooperation with Idajo. We'll do that on Tuesdays as always. And and Manny, will you love this? All all January, all Schubert, including a Schubert birthday party at the end of the month. Ooh. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and Thursday, fun. Thursdays I like. To, I don't announce who's coming the next Thursday because I like to be surprised myself. We have a list of people. We we reach out. It, we also try and coordinate with the Global Concert Hall. And tonight, you were on two lists. One, one of my favorite artists and colleagues in the business ever. And two, these extraordinary concerts you and Yo-Yo are putting on uh, Global Concert Hall, I believe last week and this week. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Anyway, without any further ado, and no more thank yous until the end of the show, may I welcome Emmanuel Ax, as we all know in the business, as the one and only. Money Axe. Hello, sir. How are you? So nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And I'm catching you in Texas right now, in Dallas? In Dallas, yeah. Yeah, where there's uh, there are there are concerts being held by the Dallas Symphony. And, it's unbelievable. And get, it is incredible, but they have been so amazing with, with the whole approach because every morning we go to, when I go to practice, I get my nose swipe right. uh, just to make sure that everything is okay and I'm not infecting anyone. I don't do the uh, nose, I do the throat. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, I, I feel it here. So my sinuses oh. are amazingly clear this week. <laughs> uh, everything is, everything seems to be knock on wood fine at the moment. Is there a public? Uh, I think they're going to have about a hundred people, maybe 150 per concert. Uh, it's quite a large hall, so they can yeah. put them, I guess, pretty separated and sort of in the balcony and so forth. So it's it's quite distant from everybody. Are they, are they streaming as well? I think they're streaming as well. Yeah, on their on, on their website, whatever their subscription I, website. Yes, right whatever the DSO website is. And uh we hope, you know. I hope. I hope I play decently. I always hope that, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I, uh, I think the I think the odds are in your favor. I mean, I've never heard you play indecently, but I've heard you say that comment before. Well, uh, have you I'll, have you actually ever played where you thought, oh, that was not good? Oh, a lot, M many, many times. I I, I suppose all, all of us uh, have. At least, I, I, the people I know have only a certain number of evenings where they feel that everything went pretty well. You know, and well, so I mean, that's that's true. But have you actually ever? I mean, I've, I've had it. I mean, it's unfortunate. Well, how can we go about this? Let's start with Pavarotti. Pavarotti <laughs> used to say, "You know, um, in a season, uh, maybe four or five times, uh, I am in the absolute the perfect voice, exactly how I think I should be giving. Sometimes I have performances those nights." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You know? Well, I I think what what we all practice for, of course, is to maintain a standard 
standard yeah. where if things are not feeling good and, and you're not well and you're not in, in tune with everything, you can still do a decent performance. You know, you can still think... make, you can still do something that makes the music feel good for people. I mean, that's the important thing that they should get, they should get the beauty of the, of the composer. And, and I that think that, might... but, but the very reason that you say that tells us that all the energy you put into making sure your bar never goes under a certain level mm -hmm. is all about the moment of beauty and creation that you're recreating. And that, that well, has to be what always shines through, isn't it? I, I think so. Well, you know, it's, it's the usual, it's the usual thing that, that my friend Yo-Yo always says, he says, there's, there's this triangle, there's, there's the composer, there's the performer, and there's the audience. Right. And if any of those aren't working well, it's not so good. So what you hope for is that you are not the weak link in the <laughs> chain. You know, that's, that's, Really yeah, or even, or even more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, come leave it to Yo-Yo to come up with something. Yeah. Yo-Yo well, we Ma. He, now he's a cellist, right? He plays. He plays the cello. Yeah. Yeah. He plays the yeah. cello. He's done uh, well. He's, uh, uh, you know, for someone for someone from Chinese extraction, he plays very yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today, we're, today we, well, I have, we have to confess, we're probably going to tease Yo-Yo a little bit because he might actually watch part of this. And and Yo-Yo Ma and is, is is merciless teaser, merciless teaser. And especially I'm, today to say to say anything about uh, oh, yes. Chinese performers, <laughs> you know, you're talking about about people who are absolute superstars and geniuses. Yeah. And but, it's an incredible exactly. explosion. It's phenomenal. Well, I, I'm now. I presume that he has a U.S. passport, right? Yeah. No, he was actually he was born in Paris, right? And came and came to America when he was five or six. Exactly. No, I'm teasing. With his parents. What, yeah. Have you yeah. have you seen that wonderful? Have you seen that wonderful YouTube of him playing as a child for John F. Kennedy? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Well, he's oh. it's it's quite. I I I found somewhere that he's actually performed for six presidents, wow. which is quite, quite unbelievable. So uh, and, and, I guess- And all but I one guess... of them didn't, all, all but one of them didn't fall asleep. <laughs> 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 yeah, I love it. Anyway. Well, actually we're teasing Yo-Yo because part of this program we want to, I want to talk about, I want to, I, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I, I, I'm just fine. I mean, I know you, as I said before, as we were coming on air, I know you and I don't know you and, and going through your website, which of course is a beautiful website. Why wouldn't it be? I know that I know the designer, uh, <laughs> my, my people, your people. Um, oh, but didn't know that. <laughs> but you know, when I, when I looked up and I actually, which I don't often do, but I just, I thought, what the heck? And I, and I found you on Wikipedia and I was a little bit taken aback in the sense that, you know, right at the top, it says, uh, Axe was born to Polish Jewish family in Liv Lviv, Ukraine, Liv right? Which U he was in the, and to his, your father was Joachim and your mother is Helen. And yes. both parents were Nazi concentration camp survivors. Now, usually I start an interview by having, you know, you tell me how you got into music and loving and so forth. But I, I just, I, I just can't imagine what that means. Can you tell us that story well, and what, what your early life was like? The, quite honestly, that's something I can't imagine either. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. It, what, what, what people like my parents went through. My my mother was in a labor camp for a while. My father, as as we were talking, actually was not in a concentration camp, but he okay. was he was hidden for about three years in the basement of of a church by a priest, a very brave priest. Three and years, something like that. Yeah, when he when he came out, he had this. I have a little picture of him and it's this enormous beard, you know, down to, he looks like, like double Tolstoy or, or something. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I think in, in fact, I think none of us can really, none of us who've grown up in, in the first world right. can ever imagine what no. 
what these people went through. It's it's completely how how any of them made a life. You know, when you read books by Elie Wiesel, yeah. or, or I mean, this is this is what tells you what. What, uh, what, 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 what am I thinking? Pavel Pavel Levy, the, Primo Levy, Primo, Primo Levy, Primo, Primo, Levy. Primo unbelievable. Levy. The, the, yes, the, yes, the, the, a great novelist and a yeah. survivor of an actual of an actual. I think he was an Auschwitz survivor. The, yeah. the book is Maybe. the pity of it all. Yes, and the, and he's written also the periodic table, a number right. a number of a number of novels about. The, the now, time. before you tell us any more, I have a you know I'm I, I, I'm very often in Israel. Uh, and incredibly glad to so I have a lot of Jewish friends, but I've also spent enough time in Israel with with Jewish families who have a similar heritage. Yeah. And I've been told on occasion when asked colleagues of, of your generation, my generation, yeah. you know, what was that like at home? And said so they didn't talk about it. Exactly. Nobody, my yeah. grandparents never talked about it. my my mother, my you know, they it was not. And and actually, some of these uh, yeah, the Yashem uh, uh, museum that is just about four or five years old now yeah. has actually been. I was told by by my colleague guide that these museums have been as important to the Jewish people as it has been for a non-Jewish people to understand yes. the Jewish people. Yes. And well, and that seems extraordinary. Was it like that for you too? It was like that for me too. My parents really didn't didn't talk about it. They really didn't. And and of course, when wow. when I was born, they were also we were in the Soviet Union. You know, my 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 father, my mother, and I are from from the same city. We're from three different countries. Uh, my father was Austrian, <laughs> oh, born wow. in the born in Lemberg in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Yeah. My mother was Polish, born in Lwów. Lvov, Poland, which is the lion city, Lemberg, Lvov, yeah. you know, it's all. Got I it. was born in Lvov, Soviet Union, and now it's in Lviv, the Ukraine. So in fact, my, my passport, my US passport says born in Lvov, Austria, because my Oh father, my goodness. So, so that's a little, a little strange, but you know. Well, now, how I old are you? you so you, you, when you grow up, you, spo you spoke Polish? And you speak, you spoke, still speak Polish at home, right? I speak Polish. Well, I speak Polish with friends, and of course, I spoke Polish with my parents. Right. Uh, I spoke a little bit of. I spoke Russian. That was at the beginning because that's wow. where we were. But we left Russia for Poland for Warsaw when I was about seven. Okay. When I was ten, we went to Canada. Okay. And when I was twelve, we wound up in New York. So I've I've had a, a hopscotch uh, time. Uh, and did ger did German come up? Did your did your dad was his first language my, German? My, my dad spoke fab perfect German. My dad uh -huh. actually studied in Vienna. He got uh -huh. his he was a speech and voice therapist oh. and got his degree in in Vienna. So he was uh, I got my love for opera from him because he was a he was an amateur singer, and he heard all the greats that went through Vienna in those days. Oh my god, I can't I can't imagine. The, the tenors for him were Tito Skipa, was one oh. of his great favorites. Uh, yeah. He heard Chaliap in live. <gasps> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh, as a young man. Well, so uh, that's that's what. And of course, if I may say so, it's such a pleasure and honor to speak to you because we have been at your memorable performances of Traviata. Of Onegin, of um, Figaro. I mean, these are all things that I will you, never forget. It sounds like at least one of them was on was one of the one of the five nights during my season. I, I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got it right. All those. I think the last time right all those nights. That, the last time we saw each other physically was, I believe, Salzburg, and you were making an extraordinarily late debut. Yes, were you? I, I, well, I I played in Salzburg for the first time, I, I guess with with the Vienna Phil about right. two years ago. Yeah, and I then, mean it was. Yeah, yeah, or three years ago, and uh, you, well, it was it was an incredible thrill, you know, to that orchestra oh my, has been incredible. That was that was part of my father's life, of course, yeah. and part of my life. I heard them so often at Carnegie, you know, when yeah. they would come and and, and play in America. Yeah. And I recorded endless recordings. I, I wore out 
uh, two LPs of the Lied von der Erde with uh, Leonard Bernstein conducting James King and Fischer James King, I mean, in, unbelievable. In, uh, and the Vienna Philharmonic. Unbelievable. Uh, forgive me for di diverting the conversation. May I say how fabulous your recording of Lied von der Erde is with MTT. That's fine. Yeah, we can go that, on with whatever you like. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> just wanted but, to add that. No, I'm actually, I, ladies and gentlemen, I, we're going to just stop here for about five minutes. I want to just let that soak <laughs> in. You know? so I, the Dust Eats von der Erde, I'm so fortunate to have been a baritone that hit the right wave and I sang it quite often. Yeah. My first ones with Bernard Heitink. I know you were very close with him, and yes, and uh, yeah. have have had so many wonderful from Alan Gilbert to to Zubin to Michael to Eschenbach. You know, I mean, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. It's it is a glorious it, piece of music. It's un, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's it, go back. It, okay, let's catch up yeah, with it. Let's go sorry. back because no, 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 no. Sorry, it's wonderful. I just want to because I. So we've got you, and it says that your father was your first piano teacher. Yeah, kind of. He wasn't really a pianist in any way, but, you know, he knew the okay. notes because right. he sang. And sure. then I got a teacher. I got a very nice teacher. Were you um, prodigious? And were you a protege at the beginning? No, was not, not, not at all. Not oh. at all. I was, I, I was just a normal kid who liked <laughs> it a lot. You know, I yeah. think that was the point. I think a lot of the time when we see young, young kids, uh, young kids, uh, there's a, a, an unnecessary double, yeah, so kids, <laughs> when we see kids, um, in, in either in music or, or in, in painting for that matter, when you go to a, a first grade uh, classroom and they show you, oh, this is what the kids did, you know, and you right. see some, some incredible art okay. on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And then some stay interested and become Keith Haring and some uh, lose interest. And, yeah. and I think the same thing happens with music. I think there's a lot of talent, but some kids take to it and they want to continue doing it. Yeah. And a lot don't. So I think I think a lot depends just on that level of interest more than talent. But you always a, just, you just love to make music. You love the piano. You felt like really that was your instrument. Did you play I any really other like, instrument? No, no, that's it. Uh, my fantasy was to play timpani after a while. And that I that I got to do once. I, I you know how do you know how bloody difficult that is? I do know. I do. I know. tried I, one day, and they said, "Well," yeah. and, and I and I you know went after it, and and everybody, and everybody looked like, "What is wrong with you?" And I said, yeah. "What happened?" Yeah. He said, "It's not in tune." I said, yeah. "What do you mean not in?" I'm I'm like twelve years old, you know, or yeah. thirteen years old. I said, "He said, oh no," and they hand me this picture. You got to no, it's got to be D and D oh, and an A, and you got to be you know, and 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 I and I was like. Berserk. I, mean, I just, I just said, no, I don't, I don't know what to do here. It I'm so, I mean, really great timpanists are amazing musicians. Yes, yes, they are, they are, they are fabulous musicians, and I, I, I love watching them, and, and oh. I, I, I've had a chance to to study with a few of them. It's so fantastic. The now, was yeah, your mom so. was your mom musical, and do you have no. sisters and brothers? I'm an only child, and all right. Mom, there was my mother was not uh, not she likes music but was yeah. totally totally uninterested. Yeah. Right. Well, but they supported That's, you. So, so you when, when you went yeah. to Canada, why why was it first of all Canada? Uh, simply because my my parents wanted to get to the West. You know, it was everybody was behind the Iron Curtain in those days. Sure, sure. And uh, we had some. We had my mother had some very distant cousins in Winnipeg, Canada, in, okay. in the Midwest. And they were nice enough to write a letter that said, we are, you know, we, we will be responsible for them coming. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. So, so that's how we could get out. And we became stateless. We went to Winnipeg where people were incredibly nice. I was 10 years old at that time. And it was the, uh, in my life, the great culture shock because all the technology, which yeah. had not existed behind the Iron Curtain, my first television, my first yeah. toaster. This must be what, late 50s? It's 1960. Uh, 1960, so, okay. So the great, I saw I saw my first toaster. Yeah. That was, it was miraculous. You know, not only did it do the bread, but the bread came up by itself. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love car, it. Yeah. Cars that, you know, in, 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 in uh, Poland, all the cars were like 1930s Hudson's. 
And here to see this was the day of the tail fins, remember, with the Cadillacs. Yeah, fantastic. These enormous, it was amazing. It was a fabulous, fabulous exposure for a 10-year-old. Amazing. I can imagine. And and so you just kind of landed because the sponsors in Canada didn't have any, ch you didn't, you, were you, do you think your parents were always thinking springing board from Canada down to an America? Is that what your dad wanted think, to well, work my, or? I, I think it was because my, my dad looked for work in Winnipeg and at the oh, okay. time, speech and voice therapy was a very new field actually. Yeah. Sure. So there was there, he couldn't find any work there. And I thought he thought the only way to get work would be to go to a large city yeah, where there sure. were more possibilities. And it was very hard for him. He had to learn English, of course. And, and you know, all of, all of that for me was very easy. But for my parents, it was difficult. And in, in Winnipeg for a couple of years, uh, we, we uh, were the proprietors of a little grocery store in a not very, not like a 7-Eleven, in I a not it. very nice section of the town. <laughs> and uh, I used to help out at the cash register, you know, and, and uh, sell various items like chewing gum or whatever and so but people were people were amazingly kind they, they were really wonderful I, and and, and I'm, I'm just i'm just so fascinated by this are, are we are we talking about i mean i'm just so fascinated by this idea that this generation that went through this hell was so mm -hmm for very justifiable reasons but somehow hard for us to understand two generations departed from it that they didn't want to talk about it so it wasn't like you were in a jewish community where every so often this or that family would together and you would talk about mom or dad's issue or grandparents or god no. forbid somebody you lost uh no we were very we were also very much uh we were uh, i i'm really an apostate when it comes to religion Got it. you know and yeah I, think, I get that and i think I think probably the reason for that was because my parents in the Soviet Union, it was difficult to be Jewish. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, uh, especially to be an observant Jew, and they weren't. Right. They weren't very interested in that in the right. first place. They didn't okay. come from that background, so I I didn't learn anything. You know, okay. my, I felt so guilty. The rest, the rest of the for for many years at every seder. That, that we would go, we had these wonderful neighbors in New York who always held a Seder. I of didn't course. know any, I couldn't read a thing. <laughs> and my mother was always looking at me, you know, saying, why can't you be like these people? And of course, <laughs> I kept wanting to say, no, it's your fault. You never taught me any of this. You know? I love it. So, <laughs> well, I, you know, I was raised an evangelical Christian. So, and in fact, Seventh-day Adventist. So I grew up oh, very wow. close to the, to the Jewish tradition and Jewish uh -huh, history. Uh -huh, and, all, uh -huh. you know, the, the evangelicals essentially believe the New Testament fulfills the Old Testament. So you learn yes. both and, and incorporate yes. it. But yes. a lot of the, the Jewish traditions were, were in terms of practice, and of course, being a Seventh-day Adventist, uh, and, and and Lenny was always fascinated by this because his his father was very close to the Seventh Day Adventists in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, and I that was sort of the birth of the of the one of the births of the great health movements in the country. Uh, uh -huh. And the Seventh Day Adventists all have always been extremely uh, known and and, and and respected for their their devotion to medical science still to this day and the huge yeah. hospitals and so forth. Wonderful, yeah. but my my point was. There were still, you know, I remember being invited to my first Seder. And I said, a what? <laughs> uh-huh. Huh? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit, I, I understand the, uh, the Apple State the comment. I, I'm just so fascinated by various cultures and religious symbols. And, and to me, they all illuminate one great river of humanity and one great notion of divinity and, one, and, and the so. respect and yeah. humility we should have to that. Um, yes. I, I, and I have a hard time understanding the, the, the physical animosity of religions. I, I, I intellectually, yeah. and, and well, I'm not, is, I don't want to provoke it and I don't want to ramble here too much, but it's like racism. I, and in, in our country, I, I can intellectually get my head around it. I just can't identify with it at all. I don't, I don't know what that's like. I don't, and I don't want to know, but I don't this understand is, why. I just don't understand it. This is probably why sometimes I'm very grateful that music is my religion and not anything else, you know. Well said. One good thing about satyrs, though, they're very flexible. It depends at what level of observance yeah. you are. Yeah. So they could True. take five hours, 
but they could be it's sort of like it's sort of like don carlo where you can cut out <laughs> the, you know you can get get rid of the french version and just have yeah. a normal size you know it's That's perfectly right. fine so <laughs> uh well 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 said well so yeah okay so you're 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 trugging along did you have other interests in school or was it really it, i mean it, it was, of course you, you have pretty, a degree in french so obviously you're do you, how many languages do you speak now well i you know I, i'm fluent in polish i'm not bad in french uh i'm getting better in english <laughs> and, ah. and any I'm, russian left uh, a little, just a very little, sad to say. German. And I'm hoping. I'm hoping to pick up some Spanish because my oh. my grand my grandkids who are now six are starting to do Spanish in school. So I'm hoping to pick that up. You know, um, I, I it, 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 same with me. Somehow, you know, and I speak a couple of languages, and you're over here and you sing. I've well, sung in four, I've sung in fourteen languages. Yes, of course. But, but somehow Spanish Spanish went by me, and I remember the first time going to Spain. It was, it you know, you know from the history books and the glorious. And I don't mean to be so. I don't mean by any means, ladies and gentlemen, being patronizing. Just how naive you can be. The first time I actually went to Madrid, I was actually in Spain. You're just yeah. overwhelmed with the grandeur yeah. of it and this. Yeah. It's, and this enormous culture and historical presence that that somehow when you're not in it kind of goes along and you respect it i don't mean to be a, like i said at all patronizing but why why spanish didn't come into my orbit i don't really know i miss it uh you know it could be it could be just your your musical direction you know i, I mean because you sing french opera Right, yeah, French. Italian well, I mean, you know, the, the meat and potato, French, Italian, English, yeah. German, you but, know. But maybe maybe you didn't you didn't look at the at the Spanish music of which there is no. a lot. And of course oh, when God. you you know as far as as far as pianists go, you know, there's a there's an incredible wealth of great Spanish music. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> You know, it's you speak you speak enough languages. It's enough already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have sung in Zulu. Have you really? Can you imagine? I did. It's you know, we beautiful. both we both know Don Upshaw, of course. Oh. And a few years ago, I I was doing a project for Chopin's two uh, hundredth birthday, Chopin and Schumann, and I thought oh, I wow. asked Don if she would be brave enough to do Chopin songs with me. Oh wow. And the poor lady actually studied the text, and this was for her. You know, it's th that oh, language. It's, there, it's there, a, there's it's a word. There's a word. Insect, for example, which is eight consonants and one vowel. Change well, is the word. It's impossible. <laughs> you know, it's impossible. So, <laughs> you know, I did. I did this project with Rattle way back in the day. We did King Roger of Shimonovsky. Oh, yes. It's and fabulous. and yeah. and Philip Langridge and I were the only two non-Polish speaking singers, oh, also the two protagonists, <laughs> as it would as it would happen. Um, and it was the the thing about Polish Polish a lot most okay. languages even even French, but especially especially Russian. You know they have or even Czech, they have a sung pronunciation and a sung tradition that rounds out ameliorates some of the some of the the difficult. This is not true in Poland. Poland is a spoken tradition, and all of the sounds of the spoken yes. language must be literally heard to be understood. Yes. And I'll never forget having yes. having the word <laughs> enough on an F sharp that I had to sing with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, I mean, my throat, you know, ah, you know. Dosic is the word, yes. Dosic, exactly. Dosage, but you got to get yes. the dosh, you know. Um, and, and, and the funny thing, God bless Don, because actually I, we worked our tails off. And when the Polish cast came, and I wasn't just the the, the, the 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 shepherd and the and the love interest was also a, um, a repose and they were so nice and we worked very hard and i said you know i don't want to sing stupid things you know please help me and uh, <laughs> it, which is you can do that with polish colleagues you have to be very careful about about that <laughs> remark in israel singing <laughs> hebrew you know somebody asked me on a, on a, on a what's it like to sing hebrew in israel 
isn't it disconcerting because everybody has a different a different way and i said no no think about it you have seven million language coaches to help you (laughs) 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 you know because i mean it's true it's fantastic (laughs) but with polish they were so good but we we were we were so convincing at it that somebody from the polish television but a radio said you know we're we're having a big celebration of chopin um we'd like to do the integral chopin leader and and you know and he said yes he said it all to me in polish and i stood there and i went (laughs) you know he said that's not possible i said (laughs) promise me it's possible well well, that's a phenomenon you don't have to speak a language to sing it of course you have to translate it but you know when you sing a language it becomes a musical element the language does i don't know if, if, he, if he, and that's i think one of the reasons why you as a musician love love opera so much so let's go back to you sorry about that we're wandering around here i love it this is this is this, this is like if we were having dinner and and i know you cook really, really well yeah. so um are you are your kids musical not you know i think they're they're musical enough but they're right. not so they're not so interested they didn't want to they weren't they weren't interested in music no and that's maybe yeah. our fault to some degree maybe our fault because Why? we we kind of we kind of backed off on the one hand and on the other hand we really wanted them to be good in good shape good athletes yeah so bravo we pushed, we pushed tennis and being fit more and i'm happy to say that our kids do take that seriously and are oh. actually fit. Is um, your wife is a great. musician? My wife is a pianist as well. Yeah. As well. She's right. she's reti- she's retired now, but we met we met at Juilliard. Okay. And uh, you know, we've been she's let me back in the house ever since, which is very <laughs> nice. You studied with somebody quite significant at Juilliard. That was a hard class yeah. to get into, right? Yes. Yeah. Also also a Polish a Polish pianist named yeah. Mieczysław Muntz. Yeah. Uh, who was a, a wonderful, wonderful pianist who suffered in in the in the early forties? He had the same sort of problem that Leon Fleischer had and Gary Grafman had with the hand. So, and of course, at the time, they really had no treatments for anything like that. So he retired very early and became a teacher. But uh, I studied with him for twelve years and was very, very fortunate to be his student. What is that yeah. that happens to the hand? With you with the hand, I I think it it with something called focal dystonia. Okay. Which I have been lucky enough not to suffer from. But what happens is yeah, if we don't want to talk about this, if this is something pianists don't talk about, no, 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 it's 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 absolutely fine. But I think the the the, these fingers curl up, right? You can't really, you know, there's there's no way to actually straighten them unless you work three hours a day on this muscle, you know, and thing. So, you know who else suffered from it and was not a pianist? Kurt Mazur. If you uh, remember, that's what that was, of course. Hands, when he shook hands Yes, you, especially the left hand. Is, exactly. Because he had, he had focal dystonia. So, ah, it's the same yeah. kind of thing. And it's, you know, it, it. I think they're learning much more about it. But the fact is, you know, you're lucky not to get it. You, you have to be lucky. But Leon came out of it, didn't he? Leon came out life? of it. Leon got treatments, and some treatments were successful. I I don't think he ever came back to absolute right. top, you know, uh, absolute uh, f- uh, disease free. Right. But he did enough so that he could perform these amazing concerts, you know. But I mean, truly. he used to, he used he used to play everything under the sun, and. I, I think after this happened and he recovered from it, I think certain pieces he didn't do anymore. That's, well, that's, that's a, my that, impression. That, yeah. Yeah, well, you know him far better than I. I mean, I did from a distance. Was, I met him a couple of times of my, at Tanglewood. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. unbelievable. He was, he was one of my great heroes. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, and that's he, a great segue because, you know, you're, you're known, I mean, you're incredibly well known as one of the greatest Mozart pianists, period, of today. And, and of course, then, you know, what we call the meat and potatoes. But in fact, you have an incredible wide range of repertoire at, 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 your, at your legacy, but also, I presume, behest. The first jealous question I have is musician to musician. Once you've learned it, does it stay with you or do you have to come circle back and relearn it or, or refresh it? You know, it's funny. Of, of course, I have to repractice everything. But wow. 
pieces that I learned when I was 17 come back a lot sooner than pieces it. that I learned when I was 35. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, I, I, I think that's simply a function of the, the brain. It, it's right. just the way things are. Uh, otherwise, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not someone who forgets very quickly, but on the other hand, yeah. I'm not someone who learns very quickly. I'm quite slow. So maybe because I have to be slow in learning, maybe yeah. maybe, maybe it penetrates a little more. I don't know. Uh, I know that, for example, we were talking about my friend Yo-Yo, right? Who, who, whose talent is limitless, literally limitless, and he can pick up a piece, oh, overnight. That's literally true. I, I, I had a rehearsal with him. I'll tell you a story with with the with the Schoenberg, uh, Webern transcription of the Schoenberg First Chamber Symphony. Very difficult piece, you know, very hard yeah. to play. Complex. And we, had a rehearsal, we had a rehearsal scheduled. Uh, Yo-Yo had been on vacation. He arrived for the rehearsal, we're sitting there, and you can see the music is being opened, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and for about half an hour, he didn't say anything. He didn't talk. He just was playing his stuff, you know, and playing well, kind of reading. After half an hour, he had absorbed enough that he could start making suggestions. Wow. I mean, it's quite, you know, it's like, so some people, but on the other hand, some pieces that he learns very, very quickly don't stay with him as much. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a lot do, but not, not those, you know, that I would expect he'd have to work on again. <laughs> The last time I saw Yo-Yo, he was giving a master class at Tanglewood and he was all done and they were just about to start questions and I was supposed to have rehearsal for a concert and, and I walked out on stage, just walked out on stage. He just looked at me and I said, I said, my God, you're still playing. How wonderful. <laughs> And, and it actually, you know, it's hard to get him to catch his breath. You know, you, you think for, you know, anyway, he had these a, question, had a, these, a these big after class, these after class questions can be very dangerous. Too. Oh my God. <laughs> Apparently there was a lecture by uh, Theodore Adorno. This is, I, I don't know if this is a true story, but it's very nice. He lectured somewhere with all kinds of very dangerous difficult concepts and difficult right. vocabulary right. and he finishes this are there any questions <laughs> yes where is the bathroom <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah so sometimes it's it's maybe better to leave well enough alone <laughs> but can you imagine the chutzpah of that person who asked mr adorno that qu i mean <laughs> so going it's going to the eclectic repertoire i mean i saw that you and you and i mean you and alan did this wonderful gruber piece which i couldn't find a recording of yes. but you've yes. uh, well for one thing we're talking about yo-yo a lot because you because one we love him and and everybody loves yo-yo yes. if you don't love yo-yo it's yes. wrong with you not him yes. uh yes. and uh and 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 admire him but you guys are doing these concerts together but actually you have over what 30 years you guys have been playing together i mean you did all the brahms uh, and the beethoven we, because we, added, we, we added it up 47 years <gasps> you've known each other it's, for 47 and been playing for 47 years isn't that crazy there's something insane about that well i understand and, it because he's old enough for that but i don't understand you <laughs> 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 I do hope he watches this show. He'll get a kick out of it. We met. We met when he was we he was he was fifteen, and I was just about twenty. That's when we met. Wow. So where did you meet in Juilliard? We met at Juilliard. He he likes to say that he he likes to say that he was majoring in cafeteria, and that's <laughs> and that's and that's where we met. So. <laughs> That's very funny, and and you hit it off, and so but but because yeah, I mean, back when CBS Masterworks, you guys, I think that was your first recording, and you but you yes, made a we, lot of recordings, and that, that was some of your Grammy wins and so forth, right? Yes, we actually we we hit it off. We became very good friends, uh, and then I was with a different at the time. There was RCA, uh, you know, ah, RCA okay. Records, right? Right. And I was with I I started with RCA. But much after I met Yo-Yo, that's quite a long time. And, okay. and he started with CBS. 
Right. But we really wanted to work together. So the two companies actually made a deal. Wow. We did Brahms for one and Beethoven for the other. And okay. then eventually RCA ceased to exist and was right. actually bought by, by Sony. So it all became one company. So we wound up recording a lot of stuff. We've done pretty much the standard cello repertoire. You know, we're going to take a little break here, not a break, 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 but I want to go in, I'm going to do some screen sharing. I want to show, show uh, people uh, uh, a couple of things here. See if I've set it up right. We're going to go to, we're going to go here. So okay. what you should now all be seeing is the beautiful Maris Janssens. Yes. Uh, and this is actually the, this is actually the uh, Idajo website. We're going to go back one level here. This is, if you look for, you have to look for Emmanuel. Actually, everybody knows you as Mani. And it was a little, yeah. I couldn't, I wasn't sure whether it was two M's or an R or, you know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> Emmanuel, Emmanuel Axe. Um, Black but look yeah. at this, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to love this. You really want to drop the needle. Uh, and it's also, <laughs> it's also pretty funny to see what people thought was a good record cover back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is just a, a wonderful collection of repertoire. And if you just scroll down here, look at that young James Levine, you guys are doing what? Yeah. That's uh, Brahms. The Brahms. The Brahms. How, how many First have you, show. you must have recorded the Brahms one. I mean, have you recorded them several uh, times? No, I've done it twice. Once with once with the James Levine when I was thirty, right, and once with and once with Bernard Heitink. Right, exactly. The Heitink record, only, I know. Only a few years ago. And there's and your there my dabbling. Friend, there's yo -Yo. Yeah. And there's Yo Yo, but also you're doing the Schöne Müllerin with, with, uh, with Hokan with Hokan yeah. Hagegard. Yeah. That's a all, wonderful recording. All sorts recording. of things. All sorts of things. But if you just scroll down, you get the idea. And and I mean, it's it's it's. I know I'm doing this too fast for a bit. A lot of Brahms, a lot of Beethoven, a lot of Schubert. But what I must say, Manny, is that is that for the breadth of your repertoire that you've consistently played, it's not as um, as as represented on recording, is it? Is that just because people no. are so reluctant to record modern things, or no? Well, well you've I got this John Adams. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, Century Rolls, of course, was was the first big concerto that I that I was that the commission was for me, which was very right. fortunate. And, and I'd heard a piece of John's which I completely flipped for called Shaker Loops. Oh, unbelievable! Uh, I, I agree with you completely. One of the first things I ever heard and, of his. And there was a, a a chance for the Cleveland Orchestra wanted to to have me do a new piece. And I said, please, please, let's get John to do it. And he very kindly agreed. And who conducted so, that at Cleveland? Was that, that, that was Christoph von Dohnani. Ah, Dohnani. it was for it was Christoph's time there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was an amazing was success. Amazing. Everybody went crazy, right? Well, it was. It's a. It's a fabulous piece, and now it's being played by four or five young folks, which is fabulous. Uh, they, of course, do it much better than I ever did, because the the new breed is. Uh, you know, there's never been such, yeah, such a phenomenal, phenomenal level of piano playing as we have today. It's it's extraordinary. Look, I'm I'm just I'm <clears throat> I'm starting to to go a little bit slower here. I actually came across. Tell me about tell me about this Lieberson piece. This is a he's a wonderful composer. Oh, a wonderful this, composer. He was he was a great friend of Peter Serkin's. Right. And, and Peter Serkin and I became very close. We were both living in the during the summers at uh, in the Berkshires, you know, working at Tanglewood. Right. And uh, and through Peter, I got to know I got to know the other Peter, Peter Lieberson, and he thought he wanted to write. A, he was commissioned to write an opera, and he decided to write a chamber orchestra, a chamber opera that would be for two pianos and a small ensemble. So we have we have Yo Yo on there. I love um, it. We have, and yeah, Peter, Peter's playing, Yo-Yo's playing, you're playing, you've got two pianos, yeah. cello, pianos, I saw a tuba. Cello, a, a percussion, uh, Mari, Mari Louise Neunecker is the horn player. Yeah. Uh, a wonderful, forgive me, I'm getting so old that my... my no, 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 I, 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 I should have, I should have, I'll go, I'll find it again, we can yeah. look at it, here we go. A wonderful flute, here we go. flute player. And, and Dorian. And by the way, ladies you know, and gentlemen, anyway. 
Sorry, man. If you, as you see me scrolling through here, this is really wonderful. But what happens is that two things, if you're going to make a playlist, if you click the ellipse, you can, oh, it's in German, but it's because I'm over here. Uh, but you can, you can put it in a collection or you can make yourself a playlist. I have several plays. But if you click this chevron, then you get information about each cut, which is, which is, is rather fun. So we've got Omar Ibrahim is the speaker. I mean, I'm right. really, I love looking at pieces to speak. I love to narrate. I've, and I've started doing it in English and uh -huh. in German. I, I did the the Egmont Schauspiel with a with a symphony doing the Egmont oh. the suites and the overtures. I, I love doing this. Anyway, I, you have Peter I, Serkin I, on the phone. You have many, many acts on the piano. You have Yo-Yo Ma, Andras Adorjan on the flute, Deborah Marshall on the clarinet, yeah. William Purvis on the horn, David yes. Taylor on trombone, yeah. and Stephen yeah. uh, Stefan Huge or okay. Huger on okay. percussion. Huger. Okay. Actually, okay. now that you mentioned Egmont, much more interesting than all of this, is my story about the incidental music to Egmont. <laughs> oh, do tell. I'll come back out here and, so we have a better picture. Yeah, and, and the story is as follows. I, I was uh, scheduled to play with Eric Leinsdorf with the New York Philharmonic, and he decided that the program was going to be the Beethoven Emperor Concerto, and, oh, that's probably outside here. Oh, sorry. I thought that. I left a music running. Yeah. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, so sorry he decided. So he decided that it was going to be the Beethoven Emperor Concerto and the complete incidental music to Egmont with speaker, with Werner Klemperer. Oh, my. And, and soprano soloist. And they asked, he did an interview and they asked, why, Mr. Leinsdorf, did you put this particular program together? And he said, because I've always wanted to see on a program Eric Leinsdorf conducting battle acts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy Battle sang, sang Freud and Leiden, Leiden und Freud yeah. whatever it is, yeah. So that, that was, battle acts. That That's was good. the reason for the for the program. <laughs> well, whatever. You Why, know. Not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> So, anyway, yeah. so, so what? you're, this is, this is, you're doing this for Idagio, right? Yes, or yes, I, I do. I, I do. So Yo-Yo and I just did a few days ago, a bunch, a bunch of Beethoven for them, I guess. Exactly. Well, right? let's look I here. So. Actually, let, let, let me go back. Uh, let me go back to screen sharing. I can show everybody, including you, what that, here's, what that, what looks like. Where's where, where's the website? Sorry. Here we go. I got to make the, make sure I'm on the right. Here we go. Boom. All right, wow. so now I'm back on screen sharing. If this is, I'm a little irritated this is a German because I'm in Switzerland and my browser automatically went to German, but I don't even notice sometimes. Anyway, if we click the main page, <clears throat> you've got a nice Adagio advent calendar. These are new featured albums, but over here you've got global concert hall. So we're going to go to actual, actuelle concert means the concerts that are now in play. We push that. We're going to have the Christmas Bach live. We got the Vienna Boys Choir, and if we keep scrolling down here, New Zealand, this and that, and the other thing. Ah, you know we're going to have to. You know what it is? Are we gone? We're um, gone. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're still, you're still in a, you're, you're, you're in. If you keep looking, I actually, I actually brought it up. I mean, don't, here. don't worry. It's not. <clears throat> no, no. Here it is. You are we, streaming now. Is well, we're streaming now. But is this yeah. still it? Piano voice crowd. Well, the reason the, you don't you don't have to worry because I know what he and I both look like. So don't. Uh, no, but I want people to find it. I think is this it? Finding a mid. -tier. Here we go. Global Here concert go. hall with Here yours truly and and the pontificating young Chinese boy that you've taken under yeah. your wing. That's lovely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's if he's told, if he's, he's telling me, you know, yeah. He's saying, "I told you not to take the right turn." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ap <laughs> Yeah, that reminds me of stories of, of, of a famous singer you just mentioned and that stopped dead, dead stop in the middle of a recital, turned with hands on hip to her pianist colleague and said, that's not how we rehearsed it. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is still, this is, you can see, if uh, this is still going on and you can, you can go on and hear the program, you can hear them talking, you can, this is going to stay on the Idajo Global Concert Hall for a while. There's your truly because we're having World of Song. We had a song Lovely. round table uh, two nights ago, which was really quite, quite fun to close out the year. But uh, this is recorded in Boston, right? Yes. 
Yes, at WGBH and, Studios, yeah. Exactly, and it will be available here, it says, until 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 20. So everybody, you really, really want to catch this. You want to go hear these wonderful friends, brilliant musicians, and long, over 40 years of reading and absorbing one another. Well, I, we, you know, this is the, this is, this is one of the few joys we're allowed to get older as artists, right? I mean, you know, when well, you can feel that your Beaujolais is becoming a wonderful Bordeaux, uh, or perhaps even a, perhaps if you're lucky, even a, a Cabernet, um, you know, this yeah. is, this is, this is a, a wonderful moment. As the great comedian W.C. Field said, it's better than the alternative. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. Now, yeah. the other thing I wanted to just show is if you happen to go here, you will find Mr. Axe's website and you can check in on his, his schedule. You can follow him on Twitter. You can read the reviews if you need to. Uh, and it's an extremely well thought out website, beautiful images, extremely organized. I wonder who makes your website? It's extraordinary. I wonder who that is. Hmm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's a company called Lenny's studio. So if you're oh, looking okay. for somebody to do, to do something really wonderful, uh, you might check them out. Lenny's studio.com, okay. uh, run, run by a couple of extraordinary, uh, young women. Uh, that I happen to be very close to. Oh, well, that's nice. It that's is very great. nice. That's anyway, well, Manny, what, what's, what, is there, has there ever been a season you didn't play Mozart? Not for a long time. I can't, maybe, was there maybe, ever? Maybe many years ago, although, although I doubt it, actually, maybe, maybe never. Do pianists go through, do, do pianists go through phases? I mean, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do the Brahms and that's all I'm going to do is Brahms or oh, I'm going to yeah, do, I'm a Schubert I, and I'm only going to do Schubert. I think some, some people, yeah, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not very good at, uh, at saying no to things generally. <laughs> so, so, you know, a lot of the time I'll say, I'd only like to do these five concertos this year. Okay. Because I'm because maybe I'm learning a, a new one like the Gruber piece or John right. Adams, Chris Rouse or whatever, and then there'll be an orchestra that'll say, "Well, we just can't have one of those. Could you do a Mozart or you know?" And I'll usually just say yes. So, and have you played all of the Mozart concertos? I have not played the C minor. Ah. And I don't know why. Pourquoi exactly. pas? Uh, Je ne sais pas, as they say. <laughs> I don't. I don't know for sure. Uh, I certainly like it very much. Uh, if you ever want to have a wonderful time with iconoclastic musicians, you know, I'm a I'm a total Glenn Gould fan, complete. Oh. You know, in oh. every way. And he did these wonderful half hour shows for CBC, and right. one of them, and one of them is about. Why did Mozart become a bad composer? And as the oh, example, I saw that, you know, I've seen and, that. I've never watched it. Oh, tell and me. He uses he uses especially the C minor concerto to prove that, which so many people think is Mozart's masterpiece in in the genre. There are lots, but but a lot of people think this is one of the best. You know, and it's a very funny show. It's what it's, number is it? What cushion number is it? it? It's number. It's number. It's four ninety one in K. Four ninety one. Uh -huh. And it's it's number twenty four if you're numbering, okay. But uh, it's a show very much worth watching. It's it's wonderful because I I, <laughs> I will watch it. I want to see it. Oh, he's brilliant. I mean, my God, Bri amazing, amazing pianist, and, and amazing. I've got, a, I've, I've got a quick, wonderful Glenn Gould story. Glenn Gould and Michael Susan Thomas knew each other quite well. Probably were friends and so forth. And Glenn was a very well known hypochondriac. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn's in Toronto, Michael's in New York. They're having a conversation. They're deeply into it. I got this story from Michael. They're deeply into it. And Michael casually sneezes. Oh, no. <laughs> Glenn hung up. <laughs> and Michael, Michael couldn't get him back on the phone for a week. <laughs> for a now week. <laughs> and when he finally got him back on the phone, the first thing he says, are you well? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, so let so let me ask you a question. Do you yeah. want me to put my mask on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, 
I saw I got a wonderful cartoon the other day on WhatsApp from somebody that, that, that two people are talking on the phone and one of them says, I forgot, am I not coming to you or you're not coming to me this year? <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible well, job. We have to laugh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We're not making yeah. light of of a very dark time, and especially in America where so many people and I don't want to be political, but I'm going to be are so unnecessarily suffering in this well, un unconscionable perfect storm of pandemic and an economic obscenity and political stalemate. I mean, this is we will look back on this as an unfathomably irresponsible dark time in our history. I'm and, and, the, and the one thing I'd like to say is it's it's been it's been a nightmare year, but we have to be so grateful to the people that have been working oh, yeah. over, like, like so, so, so hard and putting themselves in harm's way and working overtime and just making life possible for the rest of us, for sick people and, and for well people. I'm just, you know, the, my gratitude is boundless. I wish, I wish we as musicians could do more. I think all we can yeah. do is provide some relief and some maybe some pleasure and maybe some hope and get people away from this but well uh, many in, you know, in honesty it, 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 honestly that's one of the reasons I, I i said i would do this and this and and it has been meant a lot to me over the last six months my my gratitude to our public and and idondro for making yep. this possible is also very personal but i think you know we've gotten so much wonderful response to have you and i chuckling and carrying on and talking about this and that and the other thing in music this is a side of our life that people don't they may assume it happens because we're normal people as well but we're not really, really normal because we're classical musicians that can't be normal but i mean the idea that you know to, to, to that's part of the digital miracle that we have that we have embraced this year which we must look at as a as a silver lining to very dark clouds it's self understood now that there is this digital reality that in fact augments and 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 makes possible a more equilibrium physical reality i don't know if i've said that very clearly yeah. but no no i you you've, you said it right yeah i i understand i it, well i mean in a very simple sense imagine what life would be like if we didn't have this unimaginable it, it's it's unimaginable may i may i say that it's so wonderful to spend some time with you i am going to say goodbye because i now have a date to read to my grandkids. Oh, I love it. I love it. I have Good to, for I you. Have to read, I have to read Stuart Little, a chapter of Stuart Little to my kids. So I'm going to do that. But can I thank you for including me in this? Oh, don't be I silly, Manny. Thank you for joining us and talking about it. And and if you run into that guy, the the, the, the older Chinese fellow that you work with, um, you know, I'll give him. I'll give him a needle for you. <laughs> give him a give him a needle. Tell him it's from Hampson with nothing love and admiration as well I to will. you I will. thank you so much for doing this good luck in dallas what are you playing in dallas uh is it beethoven first piano concert ah fantastic hey you don't get to hear that so often we hear it more now but it didn't it wasn't so often yeah, anyway well, it's fine, fine. Happy, ladies and gentlemen say good holidays to you good holidays to you manny wonderful take care of yourself ladies and gentlemen this is it for 2020 i will see you in january manny i couldn't be happier that we had this conversation everybody be safe be well yes wear the mask yes stay away from each other let's yes. get through this together so we can all make music physically in the same room together Absolutely. anyway all the best Absolutely. thanks so much thank you so much bye bye thanks. everybody see you in january